Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, Beeswax and Blowtorches, where I teach you how to make art that makes you happy. Let's go. Whatever form your art takes, I'm here to help you with it. Uh, wh 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 <laughs> More for the blooper reel. How do you create art you love? Today I'm gonna walk you through my step-by-step -step process. This is a routine you can put in place to more consistently create results you love. It's not a guarantee that you'll love every individual piece you make, but it will help you. So number one, set a theme or mood. What is the feeling you're trying to convey in this piece of art? What mindset or mood will be your focus as you create? Keep it simple. Choose a single word or a short phrase or an emotion to focus on throughout your piece of work. Number two, what are you creating with today? Are you painting, drawing, watercolor, oil, beeswax? Choose your materials and the size of your project at the beginning and then stick to it. Nothing ruins a good piece faster than when I'm in the middle of a project and I decide to try some completely untested experiment on artwork that was already going well it rarely ends with me being happy. I'm all about experimenting in your art and trying new things. Trust me, I will tell you all the times to treat it as an experiment. Set aside time and space for that, absolutely. But if your goal for this project is to make art you love, then you have to choose materials to focus on and save that spark of inspiration for another project. Trust me, it sounds limiting and strict, but when you're trying to create art you love, it works. Number three, create what I call a distraction list. It can be a post-it note or scratch paper. That's really all you need. Somewhere to dump all the ideas that are floating around in your head, things on your to-do list for tomorrow. You have items you need to grab at the grocery store. Dump them all on your D list before you get started with your art project. Your brain doesn't need to solve or finish all of these tasks. It just needs to know that you have a plan for them. If you write them all down and then set the list aside, your brain can relax and know that it's not forgetting anything. You'll be amazed at how effective this is for giving your brain space to be creative and artistic. Number four, you've set the tone or mood for your art. Now select some music to match. You can pick a single song to play on repeat or curate a playlist around the theme of the piece you're creating. Number five, select a range of colors you feel are connected with the mood you're trying to convey through your art. Any color that clashes with that theme, set it aside out of sight. Before you even begin, your color palette should start to show the feeling of your piece. By setting aside the colors that don't fit, you again eliminate that temptation to experiment. I love experimenting with color and technique, but when your goal is to create art you love, select your color palette at the start, and save the bold experiments for another day. That's my routine for creating art that I love. Don't forget to stick around for the bloopers. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up so other people know it's worth watching. Subscribe and tap the bell for notifications whenever I post new content. And come back next Friday, we're gonna be talking about how an old school notebook and a pencil can help you be creative. And now for my serious side. Oh, oops, that's not a real sentence. <laughs> uh, wh wh <laughs> Bye guys, see you next Friday.